Welcome to the French Snoofy. I'm Erin McDonald. Today I'm going to show you how to make hummus. And I don't know anyone who doesn't like hummus. And these days you can find so many different kinds of hummus and varieties in the stores, but it really is cost efficient to make it yourself. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is. And you can add your own flavors and make it personally your own. So before I do that, I'm also going to show you a great recipe for my pita chips and what I tend to do is buy these big packs which is what they come in of whole wheat wraps you can get sun-dried tomato wraps you can get spinach wraps you can get white wraps and what I tend to do is make a couple of wraps and then I'm left with all these extra wraps so what you can do is use them to make a nice little chip which is great it's a great way to use that zero waste which is a policy that I'm always trying to adapt into my life so let me show you quickly how I make these. So these are the leftovers. Like I said, they usually come in a pack of eight to 10 and I have three left over and just get them out of the package here. And what I do is take my knife and just down through the center of the circle and then pile them over again, just like that, down again. So now it's a moon and then you're cutting it again and just keep wrapping it over until you have these nice little triangles. And then onto a sheet pan, just get them down like this. And I already have my oven preheating. It's on 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is not gonna take any time while we're getting the hummus ready. When the hummus is ready, the chips are gonna be ready as well. Just get them all down. Doesn't matter if they overlap because they are gonna crisp up and shrink up just a little bit when we're done. All around the sheet pan you go, just like this. And I have a few more left over, but you get the idea. So just put these off to the side. And now what I want to do is add some olive oil. Just sprinkle some olive oil down over the top. And I'm not using extra virgin olive oil because it's just for them to crisp in the oven. So save the good extra virgin olive oil. Just use olive oil for this one. And just scatter that down all over. Just a little bit. A little bit will go a long way and help them to brown again and crisp up. And we're going to add a little bit of seasoning. So we want to get a little bit of salt. Just sprinkle it down like this, grabbing onto the pita chips, grabbing on to the olive oil like that. And I also like to add a little bit of cumin. Cumin's a nice spicy flavor, and it also goes really well with the hummus. So get a little bit of that down, and we're gonna get it into my preheated oven. This is gonna take no time at all. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to our hummus. And I have my blender that I absolutely love. And I have the garbanzo beans or chickpeas, which are the same thing. And what I've done is drain them, wash them and drain them, and uh, just let them drain for a couple of minutes. They're packed in, I use the uh, chickpeas in water. I prefer that over the briny ones. This is gonna let me season them to my liking. So we're gonna get this down the garbage and get our chickpeas into my blender. Perfect. And now, I'm gonna add a couple of other things that are very important when you're making hummus. This is tahini paste. Tahini paste is sesame, roasted sesame seeds made into a paste, which is the fat of the sesame seed. And that's gonna make a real creamy and mysterious taste on this hummus. It's the familiar ingredient. So we're gonna get, I have two cans of chickpeas and we're gonna get about a quarter of a cup of tahini paste into my blender as well. So get all that goodness down, just like that. Perfect. 
and lemon juice you want to squeeze the lemon juice I always preach that so we're gonna get some nice lemon juice down into that as well so I have my little strainer here and it's great so you're catching the seeds Let me get that down squeeze you get to give your hand a little workout <laughs> just get all of that juice don't waste any of that freshly squeezed lemon juice okay another one I'm using one and a half lemons I think that the lemon juice really brightens up your hummus some people like to use less I like to use one and a half of this freshly squeezed lemon juice and the last one let me get that down perfect okay now we have to have seasoning you have to have salt into your hummus which is important but again these garbanzo chickpeas or chickpeas were in water and this is going to let me make it as salty and I can measure and alter basically exactly how much salt I put into it and I'm not going to put too much in right now just a couple of pinches and then I'm going to taste it as we go and if I need more then I can add more but you don't want to put too much in right off the bat if you do it's really hard to recover from that it's almost impossible and we're going to get the top onto my blender just like so and we're gonna go for about a minute with this and I'm gonna add a couple of more ingredients to make it special and my own and now what happens here is basically because it's just the chickpeas that were drained you need to add water and water is key there's lemon juice but of course it wasn't that much lemon juice so we're gonna get some water down into that as well and just blend it for another minute okay great and now at this point what I want to do is add some crushed garlic and if you don't like garlic just leave it out but I really enjoy the taste of garlic in my hummus and I have one of these great little garlic presses I don't know what I ever did before them it makes chopping garlic so easy because it does all the work for you so I'm just gonna squeeze that down into my blender just like that and I'm going to use two garlic cloves for this recipe. So get another one down. I can smell the garlic already. It's so lovely. And get that. And because it's already minced and the chickpeas are already half pureed, it's not going to take long at all to incorporate it. Another ingredient that I'm, I like to use, I like a lot of heat, everyone knows that. I'm going to get some nice Frank's Red Hot, which is one of my favorite sauces, hot sauces, down into the mixture. I'm going to use about a tablespoon of the hot sauce. I'm just going to eyeball it. There you go. And just incorporate that for another minute and we're going to be good to go and start to plate. There we go, all done. And you can see that it's nice and creamy. And what I wanna do at this point, just to be sure, is to give it a little taste, make sure that the seasoning is right. It is spectacular. I can taste a little bit of that garlic. If you don't like the garlic, leave it out, but it's so delicious. And there's not too much in there. I can taste the lemon juice. I can taste a little bit of that hot sauce. And of course, the chickpea. So now I'm going to show you how to plate it. Really pretty. Just get a platter of your choice. And let me just take a quick look and see how my pita chips are doing. Oh yeah, they're toasting up really nice. They're going to be perfect and ready to go as soon as I get this down. So I'm going to take another spoon and just get all of my hummus down onto that plate and just take it all and spoon it down it's so creamy and rich and this is because we added the water and the lemon juice and if you want to leave it chunkier leave it chunkier but i think there's something really nice about a nice creamy and smooth and silky hummus 
get all of that down. Just like that. Great. And now I'm gonna just spread and spread it out like this. And I'm gonna show you a nice way to garnish your hummus. There we go. Great. So what I have here is some paprika. And paprika is a classic garnish for hummus. So I have a fork and I have some water. And what you wanna do is take your fork, get the fork wet, and put the fork down into your paprika, smoky paprika. It's wonderful. And then just take your fork and lightly put it onto your hummus, just like that. It's a great way to garnish it. it gives it a little bit of that smoky paprika taste, just like this. Very pretty and elegant. And it's nice if you have people coming over. You have a nice way to garnish your beautiful homemade hummus that you made. Just like that. A little bit more, a couple more. And as I mentioned, what you wanna do is leave the extra virgin olive oil. This is the time to break out the good stuff. So I have some really nice, authentic, Tuscany cold extracted extra virgin olive oil and just take your finger you don't want to use too much of this stuff it's expensive this is when you want to break out the good stuff the color of it is a beautiful beautiful olive green get that down beautiful and tasty now I can smell those pita chips they are ready to come out get them oh yeah oh yeah they are brown and they are crispy and that's exactly what I wanted as you can see these chips are beautiful and my wraps did not go to waste which is what I was talking about it's a wonderful way to use what you have left over and you can hear that on the crispiness it's delicious it has a little bit of salt it has a little bit of that smoky cumin and olive oil. So just pile these around and let them cool so you don't burn your fingers. And just put them all around. Again, you have your own homemade pita chips. You have homemade hummus. You made it all yourself. And this would also be great to go as leftovers. If you wanna put it in your kid's lunchbox, you could have some, um, carrot sticks or crudite would be great. So there you have my homemade hummus and homemade pita chips as well. I hope that you give it a try, experiment in the kitchen and make the hummus your own. Enjoy. <laughs>